Today we're going to talk about Taylor series. Okay, I'll kind of break it down as usual to an introduction, some examples, and we'll talk about Taylor polynomials, the general method, and a bunch of examples, and finally close with convergence of Taylor series. So to introduce the idea of Taylor series, here's what they are. Very nice or well-behaved function f of x, which really means that that function f has derivatives of all orders. Um, lots might be zero. For example, x squared has, uh, if you take a derivative, first derivative, if f is equal to x, then f primed is equal to x. Uh, if f is equal to x squared, then f primed is equal to x, and f double primed is equal to zero, well, one rather, one. And then the third derivative, you can still take it, it's just gonna be zero. And the fourth derivative, remember that we use the parentheses for derivative notation uh, greater than the third derivative is gonna be the derivative of constant zero. Zero is a constant. Well, derivative of zero is zero. And you could do that forever and ever. Fifth derivative is zero and so forth. So yeah, as long as you have a nice well-behaved function, that means it has derivatives of all orders, then you can generate something called a Taylor series. And on what it is, is you take an interval containing an interior point. And what an interior point is, is kind of what we've been seeing when we've been looking at uh, convergence. Uh, you've got some interval and say it's centered at R and, you know, typically, kind of spoiler alert here, you're gonna have a, some surrounding radius. Uh, well, that's not technically true. Let's just put it above there. You've got a radius of distance R on either side and that's an interval and A is a point that's inside of those open open parentheses there, it's not a, an endpoint. So if you have some interval with an in, interior point A, then you can generate a Taylor series for that function f at A, and it is of the format, f is the sum, infinite sum starting at n equals zero of the nth derivative evaluated at that interior point A over n vectorial times x minus A raised to the nth power, which if you expand out, um, you'll get something to the tune of this. A couple things to note, um, f of a is just the original function. It's not a derivative. The, we think of notationally the zeroth derivative is just the original function itself. And uh, you know, zero factorial is one we know, but I left off um, x minus a to the zeroth power because it's just one. Probably should have included it in there. Maybe put a one there as well. Yeah, so those are Taylor series. We're gonna explore them for the rest of this class. A special type of Taylor series is called a Maclaurin series. And a Maclaurin series is just a Taylor series that's centered at zero. And so X minus A to the nth power becomes X minus zero to the nth power, which is just X to the nth. And everything else remains the same. So just to start off, let's take a look at a couple examples. So we're gonna find the Taylor series for e to the x power at x equals zero. I just call them all Taylor series. I just put parentheses in there for Maclaurin series. So a very nice way to organize your work when you're doing this is to generate a table kind of as I've shown here. Um, and note that I haven't replaced a with zero, but x equals a tells us a is zero. So this nth derivative column is really f of our derivative evaluated at zero. And similarly, that would be at zero as well. So the derivatives of e to the x are pretty easy because it has itself as its derivative. So all the way up to the nth power, the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And so evaluating all those derivatives at zero for our, our third column here uh, is e to the zeroth power. And that's just gonna be one for all of them. And then that means that the entire numerator of the coefficients there, whoops, sorry. Entire numerator of the coefficients for this power for this Taylor series are always going to be one. And so we get that when n equals zero, the coefficient is one over zero factorial, which is just one. Oops, pen mode. And again, that's one. And this is one half and one third. But I left it as written out off, uh, as factorial and, and didn't simplify these because oftentimes we're looking for a pattern here. We want to be able to identify a pattern. Um, and so taking that a step further. So the Taylor series, remember that Taylor series are of the form f nth derivative evaluated at a over n factorial starting at zero infinite sum uh, times x minus a, but since a is zero, it's just gonna be x to the nth power. And so all of these coefficients 
are going to be given by the general formula, the pattern that we found for the nth term there. And in the sum, we can replace them with this. And then the second part of it is just to bring along the power series part of the Taylor series. OK, so finally, now that we're in Calc 2, we have a, an exact formula for E, yeah, that constant E. Um, so to estimate E, we're going to realize that E is really E to the first power, which in our formula above, E to the x, is really just replacing x equals to 1. And so we'll just replace this x equal to, to 1 here. I should be maybe doing this. Yeah, we're going to replace x equals to 1 here. And that's going to give us this expression down there, which 1 to the nth power is just 1 always. And so e to the first power can be uh, expressed as the infinite sum of 1 over n factorial starting at n equals 0. And if you type that out and then plug it into the calculator, you get this 2.71825, which is a pretty good estimate for the true value of e, which is 2.71828, et cetera. So we get, what, uh, four digits of accuracy there? Or maybe more. No, yeah, four digits, four decimal places. Um, and if you took it further, you'd get more and more accuracy. So what are Taylor polynomials? If Taylor series are the infinite series, then Taylor polynomials are just finite versions of Taylor series. So for example, using the power series expansion that we just found for e to the x is 1 over n factorial x to the nth power. Um, we see that expanding that out to the first, uh, the fourth power degree, which is actually the first five terms, we would have starting at n equals to zero, one over zero factorial times x to the zeroth power for n equals one, one over one factorial times x to the first power and so forth, all the way up to that fourth power. Sometimes they're also called fourth order uh, Taylor polynomials. I'll use the two interchangeably. So here's a general method and a way to approach uh, finding a Taylor series or a Taylor polynomial for that matter. Um, a table can be helpful. That first table that I presented when we did e to the x found the Taylor series for that. It's a really helpful way to organize all these steps. So the first thing you want to do is write out the first few derivatives. And then you want to address the point where you're expanding at. So x equals a, you're going to evaluate each derivative at that a. And then you're going to use that information to find a pattern for the general nth derivative term of f, uh, nth derivative of a. What we're doing is we're trying to find, we're trying to find a pattern for the only part of Taylor polynomials that change. Everything else remains the same according to the formula. It's always going to be over n factorial, and uh, it's going to be times x minus a to the nth power. So the game is really finding a general formula for the nth derivative evaluated at the point where you're expanding the Taylor series. So let's do some examples. Uh, so, and I encourage as you're watching this, slow down, write through and go through the math in an individual step. I typed a lot of this up so that it was very clear and I could just kind of talk it through, but you should really pause and write this all out. So let's take and find the Taylor series of one over x at x equals two. Uh, in addition to that, we want to find Taylor polynomials of order n equals 0, 1, and 2, as well as the general series expansion. So the first thing we're going to do is our left column, uh, our, our index, and we'll write out the first few derivatives. And so we're going to start with 1 over x is x to the negative first power, and that's our zeroth term. And then after that, for our first derivative, we're going to get negative 1 times x to the negative second power. And I wrote that out as a fraction to the right of that. Uh, continuing on, you see that uh, for the second derivative, I'm going to drop down that exponent of negative 2. It's going to join the negative 1 out front. It's going to give me a positive 2 in the numerator over x to the third power. And then as I do the third derivative, notice that negative 3 comes out in front. And I'm starting to see a pattern here. Um, notice right here, I put factorial. Because sure enough, uh, the, the negative out in front is separate, right? But just if you ignore, ignore the signs on all that, it looks like three factorial. And above me, it looks like two factorial. And above that, well, if it's just one, it could be one factorial. And, and up here, you know, 
zero factorial is equal, to, is equal to one as well. So this pattern seems to hold. So my prediction is that the general formula for the nth derivative, and sometimes you can't always find this, but if you can, it can be helpful, is negative one to the nth power, that gets the signs correct, and then n factorial on top over x to the one additional n plus one power. So now we're going to evaluate all this jazz at, uh, at the point that we're interested in. And since we're expanding this polynomial at 2, then a is going to be 2 here. So 0 factorial over 2 is just 1 half. And uh, I didn't simplify that. Sometimes leaving it like this is helpful, because if you put it all together in that rightmost column and put it over n factorial, in this case, you're going to see that those 0 factorials are going to reduce away. Now, I wouldn't have seen that if I didn't have this right column filled out. In general, I fill out the first column. And I fill out the left column, resist the urge to simplify things. And remember, we're looking for patterns here more than how simple can I do the, this expression. And so all that we have is, we, if you notice, we just replaced the x with 2 on the bottom when we evaluated our derivative at 2. Then looking at this, if you take this general formula here, and you say, all right, this is this part of the formula and put all that together. Then I'm gonna have negative one to the nth power times n factorial over two to the n plus one power times, uh, in red here, we'll write this times one over n factorial. Then those n factorials are gonna reduce away and you're going to be left with the general, whoops, sorry about that. Just everything that's left here gives you the general formula for the coefficients of our Taylor series with those uh, n factorials reduced away. Now, this, this isn't easy and it takes some practice, but doing a few examples, you kind of get the hang of it and you start to say, recognize patterns. Again, kind of resist the urge to simplify things as much as you can. And remember, we're looking for patterns here. So once you take that and you put it all together, what you really want is this general expression. Because that general expression gives you the first terms of your, the coefficients of your power series. Remember, the general formula for a Taylor series is infinite sum n equals 0 f to the nth derivative of f evaluated at a over n factorial. So those coefficients highlighted in green times x minus a to the nth power. And again, we have a formula for the only part of that that varies. The rest of this is just, oh, uh, yeah, 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 good enough. Okay, now on to the next thing. So what about those Taylor polynomials? Well, Taylor polynomials are just the first few terms, depending on whatever order you're asked. So for the zeroth order or the first uh, Taylor or first power order and Taylor polynomial of our expansion of one over x at x equals two, it's just gonna be one half. And if you think about that, what this is, is an approximation of f of x equals one over x rather at x equals two. Well, we know that f of two is equal to one over two. That seems like a pretty darn good approximation. In fact, it's 100% correct. Okay, the first order Taylor polynomial tax on that second term, the n equals one and n equals zero indices give you a total of two terms. And then the second order Taylor polynomial tax on that third term, the n equals two index, and then so forth. You could keep going as to how many ever you were asked to find. So back to that, uh, this idea here of, of uh, using a Taylor polynomial to estimate the exact value of our function. We saw that when we had uh, our first one gave us a really good estimate, in fact, an exact estimate. But that should beg the question, for what values of x can I use this Taylor series to estimate the, or uh, give an exact value for the function output that we've expanded into a series? So we should talk about convergence of a Taylor series. What values of x can we plug into this and get a reasonable answer? So let's look at this as our example. 
we just found a Taylor series for one over X and it's written like that. I typed it like this, but you could always put that, uh, you could put this into the numerator of the fraction and it wouldn't be wrong and it would be a little less to write, a little more concise. Although sometimes brevity is not the best thing in the world. So when does this thing converge? What values of X can we plug in and get a reasonable answer? Well, the nice thing about, oops, let me go back a slide. Yep. The nice thing about Taylor series is by virtue of Uh, 